Well, the dust channel is a kind of a strange uh, mixture uh, of, uh, it's an operetta, where the libretto is in Russian and it's about an English vacuum cleaner, but it actually deals with an Israeli reality. And the story is about a kind of a menage a trois between a man, a woman, and their DC-07 Dyson vacuum cleaner. Uh, so uh, perversions and desires having to do with dirt and dust somehow lead to other forms of uh, invasion to the home, which are uh, refugee coming to Israel from Eritrea and Sudan mostly. Uh, and being detained in this facility called Cholot, which literally means sand in Hebrew. Well, I think that uh, for me the employment of humor is almost uh, a given, because I think that there is a tradition in art, of uh, not only in art, in literature, in philosophy, of seeing humor and irony as potentially transgressive tools, you know, because the law, if we are to challenge the law, is written thinking about the criminal. Right? Uh, thou shalt shall not kill uh, presupposes a killer. But if, for example, the masochist say, says, I want to be punished even though I didn't commit a crime, then the law is confused. So basically I think that uh, humor can be a, potentially a great machine to challenge our notions of what's allowed, what's not allowed, and to reconsider uh, problems in reality in a way that is more self-incriminating, more performative, so to speak. Uh, humor is also a kind of a seduction machine. It makes things uh, appeal to the audience and brings them into a situation where, if applied correctly, they have to face certain difficult, uncomfortable questions. That's how I at least try to, to employ it. It is true that the libretto for the Dust Channel was written not by me, but by Maxim Komar Mushkin, who supposedly was an immigrant from Moscow to Tel Aviv, who committed suicide in 2011. And he is in fact a fictive artist that I invented and worked under his name for something like five or six years. Uh, and it is a procedure that I did employ in the past, because I think that in many ways, uh, also when we work under our own identity, we invent ourselves, you know? So the notion of truth is really never as stable as it seems. Uh, when an artist uh, proclaims himself an expressionist, for example, he kind of distills certain elements and chooses to, to present himself as such. Uh, but I think also working under a different identity provides a kind of a challenging to what you presuppose about yourself. So, for instance, a, la a layer of the Dust Channel was also thinking about, you know, this tradition within revolutionary Russian art of um, working on biographies of objects, for example. Tretyakov, who was a Russian constructivist, was opting for this option. So it leads you in ways that you might otherwise not arrive at, you know. The kind of blueprint for the Dust Channel is uh, Chien de Lou by uh, Dalian Bonuel. My interest in surrealism has always been very great for many, many different reasons. But in this case, I thought that it was a perfect uh, model to use, both because I think in this film, uh, Dali and Bunuel examine perversion and transgression from within a kind of a domestic setting of an apartment, but also structurally, it's a silent film. And paradoxically, the Dust Channel, even though it's musical, is silent as well, because the entire soundtrack is the music that is imposed on the action. So the film behaves in a way like a silent film. So there were both uh, formal as well as ideological and uh, uh, yeah, reasons to, yeah, to engage this kind of model. Yeah. It is true that uh, the Dust Channel has two very distinct parts. One is the story about uh, the man, the woman, and the vacuum cleaner. But in the end, the vacuum cleaner comes to life and is an insomniac, he cannot sleep. So he goes to the living room and begins to flip channels. And amazingly, miraculously, it turns out to be like a cable television geared to that specific client, the vacuum cleaner. So all the channels deal either with vacuum cleaners or with refugees and the Israeli uh, political way, xenophobic way, I would say, of dealing with the refugee problem. Yeah, well, the found footage uh, as a kind of a cable TV was also a great opportunity to pay homage to some artists that I really uh, relish, like Haron Farouki, Francesco Finizio, 
uh, using this um, trope of the vacuum cleaner as a kind of a common denominator.